Shavu Tov Rabotai. We are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi Masechet Nazir. We are up to Perik Hey Mishnah Dalid. Today's Mishnah should be Le'elu Nishmad Neria Ben Svetlana Ranbai Veliyahu Ben Burcha Yisrael of Chanabad Miriam and Sasson Ben Raya Menuchatam Be'Gan Eden Amen Le'avdir Ben Chaim Dechaim Ve'Derefua Shelema Daniel Shalom Ben Rosa Betor Shach Olei Yisrael. When someone makes a vow and wants to be released from it, he can ask a sage to annul the vow. To do so, the sage must find some circumstance that the vower did not know or fully consider when he made his vow, which if he had known it, would have prevented him from making the vow in the first place. This is what's called a petach, an opening. This Mishnah discusses someone who made a vow of Nizirut, but wants to be released from it for such a reason. Mi shenadar benazir. Someone who vowed to be a Nazir, thinking that when his term of Nazirut was finished, he would bring some animals he owned as his offerings. But when he went to bring that, his animals, he found that they had been stolen. Since he will now have to buy new animals for his offerings, he wishes to be released from his vow because he never would have made the vow in the first place. Had he known that those animals would be stolen, he would have to buy new ones. He can make he can make the same claim even if only one of his animals was stolen. Now the law in this case is as follows. If he made the vow of before his animals were stolen, he is a Nazir. Because something unexpected that happens after someone makes a vow cannot be used as a reason to annul the vow. A person's vow can be annulled through an opening if he did not know everything relevant to, relevant to the vow at the time he made it. This allows the sage to declare the vow a mistake in effect. In our case, however, the person did know all the relevant facts at the time he made the vow because he still had his animals at that time. Even if he had thought about the possibility that they might be stolen, he still would have made the vow because he would not expect it to happen. Therefore, there is no basis to declare his vow a mistake and it remains valid. But if he made the vow nizirut after his animals were stolen, not realizing at the time that they had already been stolen, and no nazir, he is not a nazir, meaning the sage can know his vow on this basis, because if he had known what had already happened, he would never have made the vow. This is considered an opening, since at the time he made the vow, he did not know all the relevant facts. And the Mishnah now relates an episode where this rule was applied. And this was the mistake that Nahum the Madi made after the second temple was destroyed. When Nizirim who had finished their term of, terms of Nizirut came up to Jerusalem from the exile to bring their offerings. Now from they came up from outside of Eretz Yisrael where they had not yet heard of the destruction of the temple. And when they arrived, they found that the temple had been destroyed, which meant that they could not bring their offerings. And would have to remain Nizirin forever, meaning a Nazir must keep all the laws of Nizirut until he brings his concluding offerings, as it discusses in chapter 6, Mishnah 9, in Mishnah Nazir. Amar lem Nechum Amadi, Nechum Amadi said to them, Ilu aitem yodim shebet amikdash chareb aitem nozrim. If you had known that the temple would be destroyed and you would have to remain in Zirim forever, would you have made vows in Zirut in the first place? Amru lo lo. They said to him, no. Bitiran Nechum Amadi, based on this, Nechum Amadi annulled their vows of Nizirut, even though the temple had been destroyed only after they made their vows. Nechum Amadi disagreed with the law taught earlier in the Mishnah. He held that even something unexpected that happens after a vow is made can be used as an opening. But when the matter came before the sages, they said to Nechum Amadi, Kol shenazar ad shelo charav bet mikdash nazir. Anyone who made a vow in the before the temple was destroyed is still a Nazir because he would not have expected the temple to be destroyed. And like we learned, when something unexpected happens after a vow is made, it cannot be used to annul a vow. But if someone made a vow in the after the temple was destroyed, he is not a Nazir, meaning his vow can be annulled for this reason. Because if he had known then that the temple was no longer standing, he would not have made the vow. And the Rab does tell us, that the Rab follows the opinion of the sages. And that is in a Mishnah Dalid. Now, Bet Shema and Bet Tila disagreed in Mishnah 1 as to whether an object becomes holy if one consecrates it based on a mistake. Mishnah Hay teaches that they also disagree whether a vow, whether a vow Nizirut takes effect based on a mistake. Six people were walking on the road and someone was coming toward them from the other direction, but they cannot see him clearly. One of the six thinking that he recognized the person coming toward them said, I am here by a Nazir if that person is so and so, meaning to show how sure he is that it is so and so, he makes a vow of Nazirut. Although he says if, 
it is clear from his statement that he is sure that he is right, and he definitely means to become an Azil for this reason. And another one of the six who disagreed with the first one said, I'm here by an Azil of that person coming toward us is not so and so, meaning he is so sure that the person coming toward them is not the person claimed by the first vower that he makes a vow of Nazil to demonstrate his clarity, his certainty. And then the third person was quite sure that only one of the first two people had become a Nazir, since only one of them could be correct, said to them, I am here by a Nazir, if only one of you is a Nazir. And the fourth person having the same thought said to the first two, I am here by a Nazir, if only one of you is not a Nazir, meaning the third and fourth people mean the same thing, but they say it in different ways. The third one says, I am a Nazir, if one of you is a Nazir, meaning that the other one is not, and the first one, fourth one says, I am a Nazir, if one of you is not a Nazir, Meaning that the other one is. Sheshnechem Nazirim, and the fifth one thinking that the first two had both become Nazirim, the f- fifth person real reasons that although only one of the first two people can be correct, both of the vows are binding since each one thinks he is correct and was sincere in making his vow. So he said, thinking that the first two of them had become Nazirim, I am hereby a Nazir that both of you are Nazirim, Shikurchem Nazirim, and the sixth one said to the other five, I am hereby a Nazir that all five of you are Nazirim. Now the sixth person has a similar thought as the fifth person, even though all five cannot be correct, he reasons that each one's vow is still binding. In this case, there are three different opinions about who becomes an Azir. Bet Shemai Amrim, Bet Shemai Sei, Kulam Nizirim. They are all Nizirim, even though some of them are making a mistake, because a vow of Nizirut takes effect, even when it is based on a mistake. Either the first or second one is making a mistake, since the person walking toward them either is or is not so-and-so. In addition, according to Bet Shammai, both the third and fourth ones are mistaken because they said that only one of the first two is an Azil, while Bet Shammai hold that the first two are both Nizirim. Bet Shammai agree in the case of a conditional Nizirut that the vow does not take effect unless that condition was fulfilled. Here, however, these people do not mean to say that they will become Nizirim only on condition that their statements turn out to be true. Instead, each one means to become an Azir, but adds that he is doing so to show how strongly he believes that what he is saying is correct. Therefore, according to Bet Shammai, even if his statement turns out to be wrong, his vow still stands. Bet Shammai consider vows of Nizirut to be like consecrations, just as a consecration takes effect, even when it is based on a mistake, according to Bet Shammai, like we learned in Mishnah 1, so too vows of Nizirut take effect, even when they are based on a mistake. Bet Shammai treat a vow of Nizirut like a consecration, in this respect, because the Torah states in Bamidbao chapter 6, verse 5, regarding a Nizir, he shall be holy, equating a vow of Nizirut with a vow to be holy, which is consecration. Bet Nobody is an Azir except for the ones whose words did not give them any grounds to avoid becoming Nazirim, meaning except for the ones whose statements turn out to be true. Now the uh, Arts Glustator writes, this is a very difficult translation of the words of the Mishnah. The Gemara in fact concludes that the Mishnah should be corrected to read, and no Nazir el Amishinit Kaimu Dvarav, not Nobody is an Azir except for the ones whose words turned out to be correct. Meaning the ones whose statements were wrong are not Nizirim since their vows were based on a mistake. If the man walking toward them is so-and-so, the first person is an, is an Azir. If it is not so-and-so, the second one is an Azir. The third and fourth people are both Nizirim since they were correct in saying, according to Betilel, that only one of the first two people is an Azir. The fifth person is not an Azir since he was wrong, according to Betilel, in saying that both the first and second people are Nizirim. And the sixth person is not an Azir since he was wrong in saying that the first five are all Nizirim. Rabbi Talfon disagrees with both of these views. Rabbi Talfon Omer, Rabbi Talfon says, En echad mehem nazir, none of them is a nazir. Rabbi Talfon maintains that for someone to become a nazir, he must know for certain at the time he makes his vow that he is becoming a nazir. Rabbi Talfon agrees with Bet Tilen that a vow of nazirut based on a mistake does not take effect. However, he goes a step further. He argues that since their vows could take effect only if they were correct in their statements and none of them could be sure at the time he made his vow that he was correct, none of their vows take effect. Rabbi Talfon maintains that a vow of Nazir takes effect only when the person can be certain at the time he vows that he is indeed becoming an Azir. Rabbi Talfon learns this from the verse in Bamidbao chapter 6 verse 2 that states when a man or woman clearly states a vow of Nazir, this teaches that he must make his vow clearly, meaning it must be clear to him at the time of the vow that he is becoming an Azir. Since the first two people cannot know if their vows took effect until later when they actually meet the person who was walking toward them, neither of them became an Azir. Therefore, the other four people also did not become Nizirim because they vowed to become Nizirim only if one or both of the first two were 
Nizirim. And the Rab does tell us, when the Chakir Bitafon, the Lachat does not follow the opinion of Rabbi Tafon. And that is on Abu Taif, that is Mishnah Yomi. Everybody should have a Shavuotov. Bauch Adonai Leolam. Amen v'amen.